Do you just work on percentages, I imagine, yeah. Yeah, don't oh, you, with, I, the, with I, the client? F- for me, personally, it's, it's by plates. So, you know, if I go 60, 100, 140, 180, ba-bum. Ah, but, right, okay. But the more you lift, the more the bigger jumps you can make. I was make. about to say, yeah. Right? <laughs> uh, but with clients, yeah, percentages, oh, they know what feels right. Yeah. So, you know, strength is very, again, very personal. Yeah. Right? So, so on that, I wanted to ask earlier when we were talking about some of the frequencies of training. Mm-hmm. So how do you... So I know that you strength training is typically based on percentages of one rep max. Yeah. So I guess the question for 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 you is is how do you understand what someone's one rep max is, and then what percentage do you work at in regard to the lifts? Is it is it eighty percent? Is it ninety ninety five? depends yeah, of course. that is so that is so complicated well, that, that's just we, we can frame this right now yeah. every answer you give <laughs> will so depend on the client but that is so complicated because gen- generally speaking is as best as you can so, so I, I don't i dislike the estimated one remax because you know estimated well, what, what does that mean so what so, so how do you wanna, esti- how do you estimate one you don't esti- no, no i, I want to know what you can lift i don't estimate I yeah. know you, you, but but if you're a, if you, and, and we'll, I, w- I was going to ask, and then mm. we can kind of segue into it a little mm. bit now about you know a complete beginner, what advice we might give yeah. them. So if you've got somebody who doesn't really have any lifting experience, yeah. I know you said that you do like maybe that hypertrophy block, which is kind of a general oh. preparation block to some extent. I think you're are you talking about those like uh, say that you, if you can hit this way for five reps, then your estimated warm max is this. Yeah, okay. I hate those charts. Yes, yeah, so it's online calculators uh, and stuff for like that. Isn't I it? hate that. Yeah, okay. I hate that because. Yeah. So, so you actually just go off what the lift is. Yes, yeah, so I think because I tell you once because when I was not very experienced uh, or less than I am now, anyways, um, I hit, I think it was like a two hundred kilo squat for five reps, right? Which is, is obviously it's nowhere near what I can do now. Yeah. But it said that I could squat like two forty or whatever it was. Mm. <laughs> I unracked that thing, and there's no way in hell I could squat that. Yeah, I, I remember on um, on the CrossFit Games a couple of years ago, I think it was like Annie Thorstad, it was one of the girls, and she was like, she was doing something, I think it was like a clean and jerk or something yeah. like that. And she was she was like repping out like reps of eight. Yeah. Reps of eight. And she was like hammering everyone. And then it went up by 10 kilos yeah. and she literally couldn't lift it. it. And I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, and yeah, I said yeah. to Kirsty, I was like, how has she yeah. not lifted that? But again, it's like she worked to that weight and then she had nothing extra. Yeah. And in her interview after, she said, yeah, she said, I can do a lot of reps at this weight. Yep. As soon as I go heavier, I've got nothing. Yeah. So again, that that is yeah. exactly Well, I, I've read something previously about sort of muscle fiber dominance. Yeah. And some people are sort of fast twitch dominant, some people are slow twitch dominant, and that would typically dictate the amount of repetitions they can do, I guess. And the power output at times. Yeah. Um, so, so when you do the one rep max testing. Yes. You know, we, we've kind of said that you kind of work up to that good warm up, and then you so maybe someone's fairly new to it, but they've been working with you for a period of time. Yeah. You said uh, was it four to six weeks for that hypertrophy block? Say six weeks yeah. could be six weeks. Yeah. So in that time, you would have been doing sort of movement coaching and, and getting correct technique. Yeah. And then typically at the end of that, if someone was quite new, would you then start looking to maybe understand that one rep max? Maybe, maybe not after straight after a hypertrophy block because they haven't been exposed to a heavy load. Okay. Right, yet. Okay. Yet, after the strength block, then maybe yes. Yeah. But say, for example, I get somebody new, right? Some of them can even like squat, the, anything, squat yeah. the empty bar. Yeah, yeah. And I think I think a lot of people are familiar with the term newbie gains. Yes. <laughs> and and of course, in that in that first sort of six to eight weeks of somebody training and lifting for the first time, yeah. you do get a huge oh, amount God, of yeah. neurological yeah. adaptation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so you will see like a huge spike in their strength, yeah. but then it, it plateaus out. Yep. And that's where you then need to start, I guess, being a bit smart yeah. with your programming. Yeah. But if you're if you're putting someone through a strength block, how can you do that without understanding what their one rep max is? I would probably find out first, to be honest with you. So, for example, um, I started working with uh, Jack not very long ago. Um, he's like 17 years old, mm. uh, and we are now well. We hit today a PB on the bench, 75 kilo, which is great for him. You know, yeah. 17 years old. Um, but what I do like to do before even starting a block, mm. even the hypertrophy block is uh, show them the basics of the movements, the three movements. Yeah. We'll probably take like three, four sessions, you know, doing it. And then we'll actually, we'll probably go for it. We'll just do that one rep max. Again, if it's we, not very high, it doesn't. Yeah. Like, you know. When technique is sound, when I know they're going to be safe and we will go for it. And then we have the one rep max. Yeah. So I never really, I never really start a block mm. without not really knowing yeah. Um, okay. Where the yeah. watermarks is. Yeah. Fair enough. And and I guess a, a key point there is, is is the word we. Yeah. They're they're doing that under supervision, right? Always. 
Yeah. One so, rem- so what single attempts? Always I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. So what what's the what role does a spotter play? So a spotter is is basically when someone is I guess well you, you, what 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 does a spotter mean to you? <laughs> That's funny that you say that because yesterday uh one of my clients well for a hundred and forty kilo squat, he bailed it back and I was there and I caught that bar. I would record it on my phone. It was an amazing save. <laughs> he would have literally broke both their both his arms. Oh don't mate. It was crazy. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. So literally one of the doctor cl- it's a doctor client that I have. He went, he thought, oh God, I don't have it. Instead of like bailing forward and just running that way, yeah. he bailed and put his arms back like this. No way. So I just was lucky enough to just yeah. take the bar off. And Is that um, something you think that at some point you might, you know, show people? I don't know. Like I, I always show how to bail. Yeah. Yes, you yeah, do. I, but yeah, I've done that a few times. Yeah. I think it depends as well on the person because it sounds silly, but some people don't have as much common sense as other people. Yeah. And... I think it, it it does depend on their background yeah. as well, with yeah. the, the depth that you, that you have to go through things yes. with people. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you have to, with some people, if they've not really done a lot of mm. squatting or they're not that sport-minded, I find, mm. you have to go for every little thing, yes. don't you? And even something Even like that. that, yeah. yeah. Sporters are essential. Yeah, because I, I know typically in sort of bodybuilding, you know, you, you would use a spotter, I mean, for, for safety yeah. on some occasions, but for forced reps and that type of yes. thing. Is that typically something that you, you use in, in strength training? Do you do things like forced reps where you've got some assisting no, movement? No. no, because powerlifting, you know, we train for competition, right? So if someone touches that bar or touches you, it's no rep, Yeah. right? So we don't do that, no. We don't, we don't really... No, 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 no. My methods anywhere, anyway. Yeah. So we don't do forced reps. That's what I was about to say. Forced reps. We don't do that. Do you do reps to failure or anything like we that? We do arm wraps, so as many reps as possible. We can we can do stuff like that. Yeah. Um, they have their place, but once again, it's more about specificity with powerlifter, and yeah. that's when it comes back to to get, getting bored sometimes. You know, yeah, it yeah. Can, it can be boring sometimes, yeah. but uh, these people love it. So yeah, that's cool. So. Going back to the one rep max thing, so yeah. we, we've got an idea of what someone's one rep max is, um, and what what are the percentages there? Because my understanding previously was that I think it needs to be at least eighty percent to achieve neurological adaptation. Yeah. Um, but anything beyond about ninety five is more of a demonstration of strength it opposed is. to uh, it is. a way of building it. So what what are the ranges or what what yeah what are the percentages? For example, uh, my client Jake right now, uh, he he's huge. He weighs like a hundred and. 17 kilos something like that but he's lacking quite a bit of muscle mass to be honest with you so we are working with literally like 55 yeah. percent. we can work 55 percent okay. sets of 10 to 12 reps so in that, that in the hypertrophy block yeah okay is that to yeah. build yeah. muscle mass yeah, basically correct. yeah he needs to build muscle mass yeah um so just going back to analogies, because I, I, I had no idea what you two were talking about when you were talking about Dragon Ball Z. Yes. Um, <laughs> an, an analogy that I've heard previously yeah. in regard to, I guess, developing strength um, is that if you imagine you've got a bottle of, of water. Yep. Um, and it's a litre bottle of water. Yep. And it's, maybe it's half full. Yep. So that's almost like your neurological uh, uh, potential. Yep. So you've got 50, 50% water in there, but you've got the potential of another 50%. Yep. So you can do your neurological adaptation. You can build up to 100% of that capacity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then when that's a, a litre, you're done. You can't fit any more in. Yeah. And that's where you need to go, right, I need a bigger bowl now. So now you go get a 1.5 litre bowl and now you've got another 0.5 yeah. litres of, of potential growth. Yeah. Is that kind of how it works? Is that an accurate analogy? Would, would that bigger bottle would be a bigger you? Yeah, so that's where hypertrophy and building mass yeah. plays its part in strength training yeah. or, it, or strength competing. If you have room to grow, yes. Yeah. So, for example, uh, my client Matt, he just competing on the 67 and a half kilo class. Yeah. He's too tall for it, right? We need to put mass on. Then, yes, he's going to go up a weight class with hypertrophy mass, work, yeah. Yeah. Um, calorie surplus. Yeah, seven kilos extra of like well, muscle. It's going to be massive. Yeah. Right? So so 55% for this particular client because they're looking to develop uh, yeah. the size of the yeah. muscle. But when you're just working on neurological strength, yeah. what, what's the range that you typically stay within? Strength work. Um, anything between, as you said, six to five reps yeah. all the way to one. Yeah, right? and, and the percentage of one rep, rep max? 80 to 100%, right? Okay. You're talking about that, the, you know, the, the top end. 